love with you. Well, good back, everybody. That is the storyline that has helped catapult friends to more ratings gold. And two weeks ago, the cast of TV's number one sitcom resigned for one final season. Well, now for the first time, one of the six talks about the new deal with Sean Robinson. Was there anybody on the fence at all? It was pretty amiable. It was, uh, everybody was kind of in agreement on all sides. That's what Matthew Perry has to say about his and his five co-stars' recent NBC deal. The friends who all agreed to stay on one more year are getting a pretty hefty raise, about $250,000 an episode, bringing their per show price to $1 million. Last year, the uh, Friends negotiations came down to the wire. You made so many people happy when you came back. How were things different this time? You know, it didn't go down to the wire. No, this, t this time it was, a, it was a very amiable situation. We all, you know, the show had this nice resurgence, and, and uh, we all had a lot of fun this year. And it seemed a little bit uh, rushed if the show just ended like this. NBC is proud to announce Friends will be back next oh, season. Yeah. People were saying there was kind of a comeback. Yeah. You know, comeback from where? We've always been doing pretty well. We've always had a lot of fun doing the show. But, uh, you know, if, if, the, if any of the rumors that, you know, after September 11th, people were seeking kind of comfort right. characters and found that in the show, I mean, that's, that's very flattering. Right now, though, Perry is promoting another show. That's right, Matthew is moonlighting, and we were with him on the set of Ally McBeal. This is the first show you've been on since Friends, were, did you need a little extra money? What was the deal? That was it. That was it. Short <laughs> on some cash. No, this came about because I've been a fan of uh, Alan McBeal for, you know, since the show's been on. And I bumped into a uh, producer at a, at a dinner party. It came out of kind of a five-minute phone conversation with David Kelly where I kind of said what I'd, like to, what I'd like to do. And he said, I think I got it. And four days later, this great character. Now, did you have to get any special permission from NBC to do this? Yes, they were very, uh, they were very kind. Were they? They were very kind, and they, uh, they let me out to, to do this and understood that, you know, it's kind of a one-shot deal, I think. And don't expect to see Chandler Bing when Matthew makes his Alley debut in April. Kind of a cruel guy. It's a uh, much meaner fellow than I've played in the past. This kind of guy uh, gets to say the things that people don't usually say. They just think. And I saw John Bon Jovi. John Bon Jovi? Yeah. Yeah. And so did he tell you, hey, you know, because he's been on the show. A few I was times. just trying to get so. some free tickets from him. <laughs> oh so we didn't really talk shop too much. Okay. I was just kind of begging for tickets. This Thursday, it's the beginning of the end. The countdown to the final three episodes of Friends. Wondering how they're going to wrap up 10 years? Well, how about a cross Atlantic move? That may be one way. I got a really incredible job offer. Hey, great! Good for you. How are you? It's in Paris. Rachel's overseas job offer throws a wrench into her relationship with Ross, but look who else has a hard time dealing with it. It means a lot if you could try to get on board. Of course we can. Congratulations. Yay. Oh, Joey. No, 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 no. My hogs are reserved for people staying in America. <laughs> Joey would meet Hey, no, get, get your France going arms away from me. In fact, Joey's having such a tough time, his friends decide not to tell him about the sudden death of his agent. Well, we cannot tell Joey about this. He's already flipping out about everything that's changing. Well, what if he reads it in the paper? Unless Snoopy says it to Charlie Brown, I think we're okay. <laughs> and as the finale approaches, there's someone else the friends will leave behind. Gunther. You read the obituaries? Um, well, yeah, I got a few curses on some people. I just like to see how they're coming. <laughs> <laughs> this one's just this, like, little thing that never is commented on. It's just... It's just always there. The coffee maker of Central Perk, Gunther, originally got the job partly because he knew how to work a cappuccino machine. They never resolved the obsession that Gunther has with Rachel. She's the unattainable, she's the Mount Everest of feminine qualities, which Gunther will never attain, but he'll never stop climbing, you know? He's gonna try to reach that peak. All right, all right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go to Paris. That's how the friends left us last week. Well, this Thursday, we are down to the second to last episode ever. And it looks as if Rachel is ready to go. Where's your passport? It should be right next to my plane ticket. Well, it's, it's not. Rachel packs for Paris. <gasps> oh, it's not in there. Oh, no. I must have packed in one of these boxes. Here, let me help you. Shoot. Oh, I can't believe I did this. At what point did it stop being funny that I took her passport? 
Meanwhile, Monica gets surrogate mom, Erica, ready for the birth of her child. Plus, hotels are fun. My room has this little fridge full of free snacks. <laughs> Erica, those things aren't free. In fact, they have one of the highest markups of any consumer product. Ross, she's giving us her baby. She can eat you if she wants. <laughs> And with just two weeks to the big finale, our friends are flashing back to 1994's very first episode. I just, I just want to be married again. <laughs> and I just want a million dollars. I'm nervous, I'm excited, you don't know. It's kind of, could be anything. Could end tomorrow, it could go on forever. Ten years isn't forever, but it's certainly a TV milestone. I auditioned for Rachel. They wanted me to come in for Monica. And, uh, but I liked Rachel. Uh, yeah, I was lucky. I didn't, I guess I didn't have to audition, but, um, we had a, a meeting, you know, a creative, you know, meeting beforehand. I'd done six failed television shows, so I, I'd read my share of, you know, sitcoms out there. Um, and this was just one of a kind. It really was. And this Thursday, it is Ross and Rachel before they were friends. See some of Jennifer Aniston and David Schwimmer's first jobs. That is on Thursday. With the best of them. All right. Can you imagine anybody else but Jennifer Aniston playing Rachel or somebody else playing Monica? Well, tomorrow's A&E biography reveals the folks who almost became our friends. My first pick choice for Rachel was Taya Leone. And we sent her the script and she passed. And for Monica, we loved Janine Garofalo. And she passed. It wasn't for her. Interesting info from Friends casting director Ellie Kanner. But when Taya passed, producers went after Courtney Cox for the Rachel role. And we really liked her, and we wanted her to test for the role of Rachel, but she kept saying she wanted to read for Monica. I wanted to play Monica because I thought that, it, um, for me, I just connected with her. But what happened was she came in for the role of Monica at the network and just blew everyone away. But if Courtney didn't work for Monica, then the producers had another option. I auditioned for Rachel. They wanted me to come in for Monica, and uh, but I liked Rachel. And as Rachel, Jennifer got lots of attention for her hair. What's the big deal? It's flattering, but you know what? You start. To, there's definitely a part of you that says, "Hmm, why am I getting noticed for my haircut and not for my work?" Ten years of friends life leads to this moment. These Us Weekly photos show the cast soon after wrapping their final show. Oh. It's our exclusive friend, Send On. The countdown to the Friends finale is on. Yes, it is. And in studio, the Rembrandts, the men behind that catchy little theme song. Hard to believe, just two episodes left. Hi, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. Say it isn't so. Hi, everybody. I'm Nancy O'Dell. And the unbelievable scenes of the Friends before they were friends are coming up a little bit later. We begin tonight with American Idol. And more of our Friends send-off. Next. by Maybelline New York. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Plus, tonight, a friend's preview as we bring on the band. And next... Well, tonight, it's moving day for our friends, and right now, we are moving in on their past as TV Land looks at the stars before they were friends. Why don't we try improvising a little? Five years before she would become Thursday night's most beloved blonde, a 26-year-old Lisa Kudrow played a confirmed brunette, lusting after Woody Harrelson on a 1989 episode of Cheers. Come on, Woody, don't be shy. Well, I'm not. There's just that perfectly good ladder over there that nobody's improvising on. <laughs> this short appearance was one of seven primetime guest spots for Lisa before landing the gig that would make her famous and very rich. It's the saddest day of my life. Sorry, Matt. It was bound to surface someday. TV Land has got tape of the time Matt turned up on the ABC sitcom Just the Ten of Us when he was only 22. Is that true? Afraid it is, Matt. Maybe people will forget about it, though, by the time your Joey spinoff premieres. Hello. And back in her pre-Chandler, pre-David Arquette days, a 23-year-old Courtney Cox was the object of Michael J. Fox's affection on Family Ties. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're right. 
It was this two-year gig playing Lauren Miller that helped make Courtney the only friend with even the slightest name recognition when the show finally premiered on September 22, 1994. I think it meant me. Oh, of course. Oh, you. Oh, you. You should go. And despite all the love this bunch has accumulated over the years, ABC is still going to take a shot at trying to knock down the Big Friends finale ratings a bit. Yeah, what's it on? May 6th, Chuck. They've enlisted these lookalikes to promote the show that will try to steal next week's Mussy Thunder. It's the modern day Louie Louie. I think. Catchy little tune. Okay, time now to grab your mobile phones for our text message poll. Which friends couple was your favorite? Dial A H T X T on your phone. That's 24898. And choose the letter that matches your favorite friends couple. Tomorrow we will have the results. Nancy. <laughs> well, while we continue to listen to the Rembrandts, you will never guess what honor Anne Heche is getting. That's coming up. Plus, tonight, a friend's preview as we bring on the band. And next... We leave you now with more of our special friend's guests, the Rembrandts, who came up with that catchy little tune we hear every Thursday. Can't get it out of your head. For a million of you tuned in to see the second to last episode of Friends. Now something viewers have not seen. Friends memories and bloopers. Oh my God, this is just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> we can't, we can't. Well, <laughs> no! We're gonna get canceled. <laughs> Not quite, Friends goes down as one of the most successful shows in history. And one reason, scenes like these hysterical flashbacks. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving! Not for me. Chip and I broke up. One of my favorite episodes Bye. is that Thanksgiving episode when we go back and see Fat Monica become Thin Monica. Everyone, this is Chandler. My roommate and lead singer of our band. <laughs> Ross. Oh, this is Monica. Hi, I'm, I'm Ross's little sister. Okay. Hi, Chandler. Oh my God. What are these matters? Is there? Is there something on my dress? That body. Dude, sorry. For Matthew Perry, his fondest memory was when he was caught under the covers with Monica. I'm getting married today! Woo! <laughs> Morning, Ross. I'm getting married today! And we had to hold for 27 seconds before we said anything else. And that, that, was, that was fantastic. Yeah, you're! Oh, woo <laughs> you think you knew I was here? <laughs> But the show is in all laughs. There are plenty of touching moments, too, like when Lisa Kudrow was pregnant in real life and her character, Phoebe, gave birth to Hi. triplets. Yeah. Hi, I'm Phoebe Buffay, and um, I have babies coming out of me. I wish I could take you home and see you every day. Okay, I'll settle for being your favorite aunt. Little high fives. Ah. But the hardest goodbye will come next Thursday. I miss the laughs. I miss the cast. I miss... You know, fortunately for me, I get to kind of continue on somewhat. Um, but I guess the cast I'll miss the most. I don't know how people are going to be feeling the last night. Like, I don't know whether I'm going to be the person who's weeping and crying or whether I'm going to be the person that's consoling or maybe it'll be somewhere in the middle. The biggest thing I'm going to miss is everyone here. I don't want it to end. It's kind of like an unnecessary evil, though, isn't it? It has to happen. <laughs> Matthew Perry's home is absolutely the ultimate bachelor pad. Even though the show is ending, the friends won't have to give up their fabulous lifestyles. You pay $12 million for it. It is like, you know, James Bond. From homes to Matt LeBlanc's $40,000 motorcycles and Lisa Kudrow's feng shui haircuts. Lisa Kudrow came in. We mainly focused on basically style. This Sunday, VH1 looks at how the six stars spend their multi-million dollar paychecks. Our text message poll results are in. No surprise, you picked Ross and Rachel as your favorite friends. Just two days until the big Friends finale, and now we are turning back the clock on Matt LeBlanc. He wasn't much of a student. 
It seems that, much like his character Joey, Matt LeBlanc was in the best when it came to the books. His English teacher and hockey coach from Newton North High School in Massachusetts says the woodshop major was neither an academic phenom or a thespian. I would venture to say that Matt couldn't find the theater here at Newton North High School. But we had a junior high school yearbook, and Matt's epitaph, if you will, said, uh, loves hockey and hates English. I think that speaks volumes about Matt. But what Matt did have was looks and charm. There's a lot of Joey in, in that. He landed his first role on high school drama TV 101 in 1989 and also booked commercials for Coca-Cola and Heinz. And then there were guest roles on shows like Just the Ten of Us and Married with Children. I am not home. <laughs> then is it okay if I wait? In 1992, Matt was polishing his Joey persona in Vinny and Bobby. I think your hair looks nice. It has a good shine to it. You don't think it hangs lifelessly? I wish I had your hair. When the sitcom failed, Matt tried to cast a new image in an episode of the steamy Red Shoe Diaries. And in 1994, Matt made some night moves in Bob Seger's music video on Daphne Zuniga of Melrose Place fame. Sweet summertime, summertime. But it seemed that his career was stuck in neutral, as he said himself when friends came along. I was uh, very available. <laughs>